For additional tuning and adjusting, such as changing metering rods and jets or adjusting float levels, you need to take the top of the carburetor off. Now the first thing you need to do is take the metering rods out. And the metering rods are located underneath these two Torx bits right here. These are T15 Torx bits. So we're going to pop one of those out. Now the trick here is don't take this out all the way. You can leave it in and twist it to the side. I'll do that to this one over here. We can pull it up and just turn this to the side. And that gives us access to the metering rods inside. And they just simply pull up. There's a metering rod. There's a metering rod. Here's a spring. Next, we need to take the top of the carburetor off. Before we do that, though, we want to take clips out of the linkage. One's on this side right here for the choke. And one's on this side right here for the accelerator pump. Pop these out. Then next we're going to take the top of the carburetor off. Now these up here are T25 Torx bits. Don't try and use a Phillips screwdriver inside of here. You're just going to st strip the screws out and you'll never be able to get the top off. And these are the screws that go all the way around the top. So we're going to start taking those out. The trick is take all the screws out down the side. Now sometimes the top of the carburetor will be stuck. Uh, just give it a couple of light taps with a plastic end of a screwdriver handle and it won't damage the finish of the carburetor and it'll help break that gasket loose. Now it should lift straight up and off. There we go. What we have right here are the two floats and the accelerator pump. So we're going to set that down, and we'll look down inside here, and you'll actually see the jets. And the jets, there's some right down in here, there's one there, and there's one here. And then on the opposite side of the carburetor, we have the same thing, because we have a left and a right side of the carburetor. But those are the main jets. The jets in the front of the carburetor are for the primaries, and the jets in the rear of the carburetor are for the secondaries. Now adjusting the floats and looking at the float level, you look at this area right here, right between, between the float and the carburetor top. And what you really want to do in there is have about 7 16 of an inch. And a quick way to do this, just take a 7 16 inch drill bit and just kind of set it in there. It should be just, just there. Same with this side. Just about perfect. That's what you're looking for. Well, once you've looked in the owner's manual and figured if you want to go up or down in jet sizes and metering rod sizes, and you put those in, it's a simple matter of just reversing the process and putting the top of the carburetor back on. Just be very careful of the floats. You don't want to pinch anything. Don't force anything. Just set it all back on. Put all your screws back in. Now the trick is when you get most of these snug down, don't just tighten one and then another. Just snug them gently all the way around, a little more and a little more in kind of a crossing pattern so you don't warp the top of the carburetor. Now we're ready to go. All right, so next step is I'm going to reattach the linkages and reattach the clips. All right, now we're ready for to put the metering rods back in. Be sure to put the springs in first. Just push these down very lightly and slide the covers back over. 
Now the trick is with these, don't over tighten these when you put them back on. They don't need to be cinched that tight. Just 10, 12 inch pounds is all you need, just a little snug. Same with this one, we'll drop it in. And the carburetor is back together. All right, one of the last final adjustments you might need to do to a carburetor is adjust the electric choke. I'm going to show you how to do that. It's real simple. It has three screws on the outside of the housing. All you want to do is just loosen those. You don't need to take them all the way out. And if you look on the outside of the housing right here, it says lean. And there's an arrow pointing this direction. So if we turn to lean it, it's going to open the choke. We see the choke plate right here, opening and closing. Now I'm going to richen it and lean it. Well, obviously, if it's in the position right there, the choke's not going to be working on a cold morning. So you want to close it up, get it to a point where it has just some pretty good spring tension on it. Uh, if we do it not enough, it's easy to open. In fact, it doesn't even close all the way. You want to give it where it's got some good spring tension. You obviously don't want to crank it because the thing will never open. It'll take forever for it to open. So you want a good ample amount of spring tension on it. Once you have that, just give it a cinch down. Okay, once that's done, we can adjust the fast idle screw. We have the main idle screw right here, and up underneath is the fast idle screw. And this adjusts the idle speed for when the choke is on. So if you want a little more idle, you can crank it up a little bit. If you want a little less, just back it back out. And that'll control your fast idle.